Okay, on page 21 of our book, we learned about the four financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, the statement of owner's equity, and the statement of cash flows. Exercise 1-14 asks us to create an income statement and a balance sheet. Most importantly, please note that in our book, the instructions for our homework problems come after the data. So please go back and check your work on exercise 1-2 to make sure that you use the instructions after the data to answer that homework problem. Alright, let's do this one real quick. Remember the income statement covers a period of time and it's simply revenue minus expenses. So up here, the this company has two forms of revenue. It gets money from collecting camping fees and it gets money from its general store. So revenue minus expenses for a period of time is their income statement. So the top line of the income statement will make that the revenue from our camping fees of $140,000. Second line will be the revenue from our general store and that's $65,000. If we want to be fancy we'll strike a uh, subtotal here and we'll say that our total revenue camping fees plus general store of $65,000 gives us $205,000 of total revenue. Most companies only have one revenue line but companies like Costco have two for their sales and for the membership fees. Then we have to subtract expenses. Accounts payable is not an expense. That's a liability account. Cash on hand is not an expense. That's an asset. Original cost of the equipment, that's going to be our a an asset. Fair value of equipment isn't relevant. Remember we use the cost principle in accounting. Notes payable, that's a liability. Expenses, here we go, finally, expenses of $150,000. So we're going to subtract those expenses from our revenue. $205,000 minus $150,000 will give us our net income for the year of $55,000. Okay, now let's create our balance sheet. So the balance sheet is assets on the left hand side, things that we own, liabilities and owner's equity on the right hand side. Liabilities are things that we owe and owner's equity is the difference. If I have a house that I buy for $500,000 and I have a loan of $100,000, that's my liability, my owner's equity would be $400,000, the difference. All right, so let's see if we can't create some assets here on the left hand side. Uh, cash is an asset and it's usually the one that we list first so let's list cash at twenty three thousand dollars supplies let's skip down to supplies because we're going to use those up pretty fast let's list them near cash they're an asset that we're going to use over time and the last asset we have is this equipment at hundred and five thousand dollars we list that at original cost not what it's worth because remember the cost principle says we put things on our balance sheet at what they originally cost us, not what they're worth today. So we add up all our assets and we have $146,000 on the left hand side. A balance sheet always balances. That's why they call it a balance sheet. So we know that the right hand side, which is going to be our liabilities, things that we owe, and our owner's equity, the difference between what we own and what we owe, the total of liabilities and owner's equity must be $146,000. So what kind of things do we owe? We owe accounts payable. That's money that we owe in the ordinary course of business to our suppliers. We also have notes payable. Notes payable are different than accounts payable because a note means you actually signed a note that said I owe you $60,000. Accounts payable just happens in the ordinary course of business. Somebody sends you a bill and you pay it later. And that's all the liabilities we have. Since we know that the total on the right hand side of our balance sheet has to be the same as the total on the left hand side of our balance sheet, the owner's equity has to fill in the difference. So we take 146,000 minus 11,000 minus 60,000 tells us that our owner's equity must be 75,000. In this case, this is a sole proprietorship, so we call the owner's equity owner's capital. Okay? Uh, things to note. We start at the top of the uh, financial statement with a dollar sign. When we get to the bottom, we have another dollar sign and double underlines. Same thing down here on the balance sheet. The top line has a dollar sign, bottom line has a dollar sign, and double underlines. And that's how I would do it, exercise 114. I look forward to seeing you guys. Take care.